Please welcome Tim Boer, Chief Information Security Officer of Colgate Palmolive. Thanks for that setup. That's awesome because today I want to talk about a campaign plan to win in cyber. Hardware is a huge piece of that. It has to be consonant with the solutions that we're putting in place. When I got to work on military campaigns, we played to win and we implemented solutions that were focused on specific campaign objectives. And one of the things that enabled that was a relentless study of the threat. In cyber, if we don't study the threat, we end up with a situation that looks like this, where we have a control in place, but we didn't understand the second and third order effects of that control. And that's a problem because the threat is increasing in complexity. We focused on that earlier, but the bar is also lower to enable a number of people to join in this fight and to, to add to the overall mayhem that comes when nation state tools are co-opted in an automated fashion and sent blazing throughout the world. And we've seen that over the last year. We saw initial release of, of tradecraft that was then followed by a set of, of tools preceded by a patch that alerted us to ring zero kernel level protections that were compromised in, in some way. And then it really got our attention when that blazed through the world in the WannaCry attacks. And too many of us spent that weekend, it was a really long weekend, making sure everything was patched inside our, our infrastructures. A couple months after that, we saw the next iteration in that timeline, which was the NotPetya attacks. Much more sophisticated, in my opinion, much more effective and consonant with the campaign goals that, that they were applied against. Just last week, we saw another ransomware outbreak that was so unsophisticated it was surprising. There was no exploit, simply a dropper that someone downloaded and, and ran. And the continual cycle that we're seeing is not met by a set of tools that we need to have on defense. In offense, we had both all the secrets, but we also had tools to enable us to break things and to figure out how to get in, and we had time that was on our side. Systems engineers have a standard toolkit of predictive tools. If you look at radar cross-section prediction and you change a single turret on a ship or, an, or a single rivet on an aircraft, you can know immediately what that means when you put that platform in a contested environment. What does it do to the survivability of the pilot who's flying that or operating that, that platform? The fundamental technology that enables that is the method of moment set of mathematics that allows you to predict how waves scatter around objects. The next set of tools we have come from finite element analysis. We can look into the future, look at millions of different scenarios around a bridge and understand the impact of moving any spar by a millimeter. And when it comes to aerodynamics, we have a solved science where we can understand every interaction at the micro scale around complex vortices that are there. Someone in defense and cyber, I want this for our software. Not a set of tools that tell you if code might be broken and generate false alarms, but a true predictive set of tools that help you to understand the surface that you have in your environment and to do that at enterprise scale throughout the whole OSI stack. A peek at what this looks like came from August of last summer, summer 2016. My job was to sit in the pit with a group of hackers while we watched an automated contest happen, while machines attacked each other in a standard DEF CON set capture the flag style format. In that contest, we presented the world's most secure operating system for the stage for the contest to happen on. We had 10 black badge DEF CON winners who spent a year securing the operating system. We stripped everything out of Linux to get down to the bare bones because we knew that hackers always attack the scoring system first and we wanted that not to be the subject of the, the contest. Seven syscalls, 100,000 lines of code, very secure operating system and we were shocked to see in the early rounds of the contest, Team TechX, a partnership between Gramatech and, and UVA, University of Virginia, were able to find a vulnerability in the infrastructure itself. They found it automatically while I was sitting with their team in the pit at, at DEF CON. They built an exploit off of that. They deployed the exploit to attack the other six teams. As soon as those teams were attacked, CSDS, another team, saw the hits of their availability. Because they had built an auto test suite that let them know all the control flow data paths through the, the system that they were on, they could isolate where the vulnerability was. 
develop a patch automatically and deploy that patch to all the other systems. This isn't a zero day, this is a zero second deployed on the infrastructure, mitigated, before we can even find out what, what happened. Where this is different than traditional static and dynamic analysis tools is direct from the binary, the ability to build exploits means zero false positives. Going forward, all software, if it can take advantage of these tools in a defensive construct, is going to elevate its level of security. And if we can combine that with a root of trust and secure hardware, we can significantly advance security further. The problem is, in an industrial environment, a lot of the equipment that's availability is, is its primary property is going to be left behind. And we're looking at solutions to be able to make sure that, that we take into account the fact that, that older hardware and industrial capacity is not inherently secure. It's increasingly connected because of economic incentives to do that. On top of that, it lacks governance inside traditional IT constructs. And on, on top of that, there's a difficulty in understanding a wide variety of, of heterogeneous protocols. A campaign to win in this area has the same three phases that every campaign has. Tactical, right in front of you, operational around the corner, and a strategic long-term vision. Presenting a plan to win in this area revolves first around simplifying to the maximum degree possible. Of course, misunderstood complexity always plays to offense. Simplifying isolating like Hysolate provides is a critical piece of, of winning in this strategy. The next component is instrumenting continually. DARPA, we were doing this as out of band as possible. There we were looking, for example, at radio frequency, optical, or acoustic sensing around different embedded systems to understand if the system was behaving differently, which alerted us to vulnerabilities in that system. What's nice about that is you have a source of truth that isn't tied to the baseline system. Having secrets means taking back that advantage that offense has, either through innovating, so an adversary doesn't find a known surface when they end up in your infrastructure, but also means looking at deception, particularly as a means of detection, to have certainty that someone's in your networks, like Elucid provides, and also the ability to, to lock in certainty. This is a great use case for blockchain and trusted hardware. When you have binaries that have gone through a gauntlet and have known properties, you can lock in those properties with a hash chain that alerts you to any changes in your entire ecosystem. Going forward in the next several years, we're going to see SMT and advanced solvers provide new insights such as the automated hacking tools. You can have at your company the benefit of the entire DEF CON floor working for a million years on your software as it goes through all the control flow, data flow paths, finding exploits. Also, we're going to have the ability to build high fidelity models here in NASDAQ we back test and understand the impact of all regrets. Wouldn't it be great to look backwards if you had had different protocols in your security and to understand the potential of future? Offense relentlessly models its adversary and defense should do the same. And finally, strategically, just like we saw in the last talk, we need to move forward to build perfectly secure software and hardware. That's an active debate. We were working on that hard at DARPA and I'm excited to, to bring that forward. Thank you much.